Well, welcome back to the Hopkins Demonstration Forest. Uh, actually, a pretty beautiful day out here. Light drizzle, nice and cool after a couple of pretty warm ones. But I got a request to do a review of how to measure the volume of wood in board feet that are in a tree. So as a forester or landowner, uh, we often want to figure out the volume of wood or that board foot uh, because we want to know the value of a tree. Board feet, that's how we sell uh, wood. Uh, it's a one foot by one foot square that is one inch thick. Kind of like when you buy oranges at the grocery store. You don't buy them by the ton, maybe the grocery store does, but you as a customer, you buy them by the pound, not the ounce. So depending on what you're uh, buying, purchasing, trading, or selling, um, we have different units. And our board foot measurement is what we use here in Oregon. And we're gonna be measuring this tree right here. Um, pretty good size Douglas fir, our state tree. So to review that uh, real quick, uh, we need to remember what, what, what is the shape of a tree? Well, it's round, uh, usually fairly round, and it goes up, so it, it's like a cylinder. But as it goes up, it gets a little bit smaller. Uh, so its shape is a cone. Some trees grow very tall with that uh, taper, as we call it, that cone as it tapers up, uh, goes and goes kind of slowly. Sometimes it's really big and fat at the bottom, and quickly shrinks in size, so it has a lot of taper. So there's some things we need to take into account with that cone size, and we've got some tables that uh, we can use, but really I just wanted to go through the basics on how to measure uh, a couple of things with a tree so we can get to that final um, estimate of volume of wood or board foot. So, um, as you can probably imagine, a little geometry, a cone. Uh, we need a couple of measurements. First one is how big around it is at the base, we know when it gets to the top, it's, it's going to zero, but that circumference. And in forestry, we like to measure the diameter. Then we also need to know how tall it is and measure the height. A couple of basic forestry tools that we use, and again, this is review, uh, a logger's tape or a diameter tape, uh, and a little device, a lot of people get this confused. They, uh, they look at it and they think, oh, it looks like a, a compass because it's got a dial in there. Uh, this doesn't measure horizontal angles, it measures vertical angles. It's called a clinometer. So this measures, uh, like a protractor, degrees, and also uh, a ratio that we'll talk about real quick, um, percent slope. So with these two devices, we can figure out the shape of that tree, how big around it is, how tall to get that cone shape, and then estimate uh, with some tables uh, the volume of board feet. So to start, uh, our tape, uh, it's a special tape, it's very flexible, and on one side, uh, typically, uh, this is a logger's tape, it measures in feet, which is good for uh, when we want to do the height in a little bit, but on the back side, it has a very special uh, measurement uh, increment. Uh, some people say it looks kind of metric, um, what is that? Well, if you can see on the video, uh, and have not seen a diameter tape before, uh, those are pi inches. Every inch equals 3.14 inches. So if you know anything as you wrap this around a tree to get its circumference, the circumference divided by pi gives us the diameter. So this actually does the math for us. If you're doing this at home, one of the things you could do is just take a piece of string or rope, wrap it around a tree, pull out a tape measure, measure the length of that circumference or that string, and then divide by 3.14 and you'll get diameter. So to get the diameter of this tree, nice thing these are flexible. You need to get it around the tree first. The bigger the tree, sometimes it's a little harder. And if you remember, we measure the tree. We don't measure down at the base. We measure at something that's called diameter at breast height. So the diameter at the breast height is four and a half feet off the ground. So we wrap the tape around the tree, measure, and you'll see uh, on the tape, there'll be different increments. Right here, we're at 31.9. Um, that's 32 inches, we'll just round up. So diameter at breast height, 32 inches. So the next thing we need to do is the height. So 
uh, we can do that a couple of ways. We need to uh, go find the top of the tree, but we're also going to have to measure how far we are away from that tree to see the top. And you can use a measuring tape like this, or, or sometimes you can just use your pace if you know that. Uh, depends on how accurate you want to get. So I've already uh, measured out a certain distance where I can see the top, and we're going to go walk there. Uh, but I'm also going to pace it once again to see how close if I can, can uh, kind of improve my pace accuracy. So I'm going to head on down. You can see there's a little orange bucket down there. Um, stand on the edge uh, of the tree and I'm do my pacing. A pace again, it's every uh, two steps, not just one step is half a pace. So I'll start by one, two. Three. So 22 paces. Uh, my pace uh, is a little shorter than five feet. Um, and about four and a half sometimes, depends on how I'm walking. So, uh, not, not too bad, um, but I measured this exactly uh, to 100 feet. So what we want to do is make sure that when we look, uh, you can see the tree. It's right between those uh, two signs, the tree farm sign to the left. Uh, we're going to look up. And one of the challenges of measuring the height of a tree while we're doing it here in the parking lot at Hopkins is trying to find the top. Now for the volume, uh, the way we're going to calculate it, you can measure how tall the tree is, but we're going to try to measure, uh, or not try, we're going to measure to about the six inch mark. Uh, and you have to estimate where that is at the top of the tree. So we're going to be doing that uh, using a pretty simple method, um, a ratio. And again, for review, you can see here, oh, the wind doesn't blow it. We're going to be doing a, um, a little bit of math. Uh, it's not too scary. A lot of times when people see triangles, they start thinking trig and geometry. Um, you might have to do that if you don't have a clinometer, but it's still not too bad. But what we're using is a ratio of percent slope. Uh, so the uh, angle of that line going up equals the rise, the rise being the height of the tree, over the run, how far we are away from the tree. So in this example right here, uh, we're using the same numbers. We're 100 feet away from the tree. It makes it real easy because that rise over run is a percentage slope. So for every foot I rise or every foot I run, uh, I do the exact same thing with uh, the other. So one foot of run equals one foot of rise. Uh, if I'm looking at uh, a, a 45 degree angle, um, our 100% slope, 1 times 100, uh, is the height. So anyways, uh, if you remember that, again, this is for review. Uh, you can find some other videos that go into a lot more detail of the math behind this. But we are going to be measuring two angles, uh, one to the top of the tree, one to the bottom. We often like that, uh, if you remember, that lower angle to be negative, because as the tree gets pretty tall like this one, we probably should be back a little further. But uh, we take, and I like to say, subtract both angles. 90 minus a negative 5 becomes addition, so it's 95. If I was looking up at the tree, and the bottom of the tree was above me, and was a positive slope, let's say it was positive 5, 90 minus a positive 5 would actually mean the height, or the angle, I mean, is 85. So uh, it's some you know, easy math to mess up, but once you do it a few times, it makes a lot of sense. So we're going to use the clinometer, and uh, I have it in my pocket right here. And we're going to try to set the camera up so you can see this. What I do is I take the uh, clinometer. And I wish I could show this through the camera. It just doesn't work very well. And I look through the device, and there's a little reel in there that has some numbers on it. And I'm going to look to the bottom of the tree. In this case, we're not going to four and a half. We want to actually get the volume, so where we're going to cut the tree. And I look to the bottom. I see a positive, no, I mean, I see a, I see a negative um, about seven. I'm going to look up to the, where I think about a six inch top is, and I get about a 90. So 90 minus a negative seven is 97. 
I'm 100 feet away. So 90% minus a negative 7%, 0 0.97 times 100, means that tree is 97 feet tall. Now, if you don't happen to have a clinometer, you can actually make one at home. It's a little more work, not a whole lot, uh, using a basic protractor. Now, I taped a, a chopstick on there, uh, on zero. Using another chopstick, I can sight down that chopstick at the base of the tree. Kind of like so. And I can take my other chopstick and look at the six inch top. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take the, uh, and the best way I do this is I hold it right up against the side of my head, sight down that chopstick, Put this one in the center, and I have to sight down there and then look up, not moving my head too much. Sighting there. I think this is this is a little more challenging. And I read, I haven't moved it. Uh, I'm getting mm, the bit's a fat chopstick. I'm getting about 50 degrees on my protractor. So now how do I convert that 50 degrees? Well, this is where it gets a little more tricky. Um, I need to convert that 50 degrees. I, I have a calculator. I type in 50 and I use the tangent function. I come up with a percent slope uh, where I got my combination percent slope with my clinometer was 0.97. Um, this is, and I did that kind of quick. This is a little higher, so not quite as accurate. Uh, I get uh, 1.19. Not too bad of a, a way to estimate the height. So now what do I have? I have a tree that uh, we can kind of keep it fairly simple. Uh, measured the diameter and um, measured the height. What I need to do now is go into another table, and you can look these up online, uh, tree volume tables. And, and this is where it gets a little, a little tricky. But online you can find a, a lot of good documents uh, about um, tree volume and scales. The Forest Service has a lot. I'm actually going on a, a USDA uh, Forest Service webpage, uh, and we're going to use a um, table from there. This is where, again, this is, uh, this is a whole science and, and people earn degrees in this. And so looking at the diameter uh, and the height of that tree, so uh, we said about, uh, again, not the total height, but to the six inch top was uh, 97 feet. We have to convert that into logs. So 16 foot logs. Um, and then we can't uh, shorten that any more or less. That becomes uh, times five. So four sixteen times five. Do the math in my head is uh, eighty. So an extra half. So eighty-eight and ninety-seven. So actually uh, six logs, right? Sixty-three. Yeah, pretty good. Six logs. That's actually pretty right. Ninety-seven feet. So six logs and our diameter. Um, what we have on that tree is a volume uh, estimate, uh, according to this table right here, of, I'll just say, just about a thousand board feet. So there's a thousand boards, one by one foot, by one inch thick, that could be cut out of there. Uh, so in the current market today, if I were to take that to a mill, um, we're looking at, of course, there's lots of different costs to get it there, uh, but it's not a very good market at the moment. So. Um, you know, five hundred dollars would, uh, would would be a great price, but uh, that's not really the point. The point is, we measured the volume of a tree by measuring the circumference, converting to di diameter, measuring to that six-inch top, the height, uh, using a clinometer uh, or a makeshift protractor, and uh, we got the volume. So, hopefully, that was a quick review um, for the school, and uh, and and hope you enjoyed. Thanks a lot.